Welcome to Benita's Maternity Program webinar. Today we'll be speaking with Sister Ingrid Grunewald, who will be talking to us about warning signs in pregnancy. Welcome, Sister Ingrid. Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be with you again today. And today is actually also a very important topic to really understand also what is normal and what isn't normal and what to do if certain things actually do pop up in pregnancy, you know, if it is a concern to you or not. So let me start off with the first important warning sign that one should know you should not have you should never have any bleeding in pregnancy okay so at any point if you have any kind of bleeding in pregnancy and this is severe bleeding then obviously that is something to um, to definitely contact your healthcare provider so let's have a look at to the reason the possible reasons why this would actually happen in your first trimester so if in the first couple of weeks in pregnancy some people will say I have a little bit of spotting or a little bit of bleeding and sometimes it's quite normal sometimes it is something quite called implantation bleeding where that then stops fairly quickly but if it continues and if it especially if it goes together with severe abdominal cramping almost like period pain cramps that also tells you that that is actually something to look um, to you know to have looked at it can be an ectopic pregnancy and that is where the little egg where this little egg that comes from the um, fallopian tube goes through the you know through the fallopian tube and then normally goes into the uterus and then implants in the uterus wall. Now, sometimes it actually gets stuck in the tube itself, and that is called an ectopic pregnancy, and that is where people also experience severe bleeding as well as severe abdominal cramping and pain. So that is definitely something to be aware of. And then also, um, it might be a miscarriage early in pregnancy see if you have cramping and bleeding at that time so again it's something that you wouldn't just stay at home and try to wait it out if there's a lot of bleeding um, in pregnancy it's always better to just check to see what exactly is the reason for this um, then you know in your second or in your third trimester and um, something else that can actually happen and I brought just along I just want to show you if this is the placenta so the placenta is the part that goes and it, it attaches itself you know, when the little egg attaches itself in the wall of the uterus, it grows, the baby grows and the placenta grows and you have the baby in here and membranes here and babies inside here. But this side is attached against the wall, the inside wall of the uterus. And sometimes you have it where the side of the placenta actually lets go. So it detaches itself and that is called a rupture placenta. That will also cause bleeding in pregnancy. So at any point, if you have any kind of bleed, red blood flowing, that is something to watch out for. And it is something to definitely um, contact your care provider and go see that person um, or go to your nearest hospital that they can see what is the problem, um, you know, that you can actually be looked at. So that is the first, so, you know, definite warning sign that you must know. Bleeding is never okay in, in pregnancy. Okay, the next one is severe vomiting and nausea and vomiting. And let's face it, you know, so if you're pregnant, the first couple of weeks are sometimes you know it's accompanied with a lot of nausea and sometimes vomiting but usually it is not continuous it's not this continuous feeling of nausea and vomiting that nothing stays in if you have a situation where you cannot eat where everything that you eat everything that you drink just keeps coming out we know that is a concern because obviously you need the nutrition your baby needs the nutrition and this is now really the extreme form of nausea and vomiting and that is something to be looked at it's called hyperemesis um, gravidarum and that is something that is also something that is i wouldn't say it's common but every now and then you do get someone who is really struggling with the, with the severe form of nausea in pregnancy and this can happen at any point the first 12 weeks in pregnancy normally the nausea is quite common but it's like I said it's not as severe and then after 12 13 weeks that actually settles and most people are then fine if it continues throughout the whole pregnancy and it really becomes severe that nothing stays in you actually also become dehydrated and that again Again, is a concern so it is important to be looked at and um, in some situations you will be admitted to hospital 
with drips to get the proper medication and also just to get some electrolytes and some fluids into your body. So it is important to also know of that one. The next one that is also quite important to understand is what about movement of baby? I often find that people really worry about the kicks that they feel with baby. And if it's your first baby, you must remember that, you know, we don't expect any movements or the feeling of movement before I would say 21, 22 weeks even in pregnancy where most moms don't know exactly what they're feeling. With the second baby, you actually do feel the movement earlier in pregnancy. But so from, I would say from about 21, 22 weeks, you start noticing movement, you feel the movement, and then every now and then. And as the weeks go and you're getting closer to 30, you know, to let's say 30, 32 weeks, if you go into your third trimester from about 28 weeks, that is where, um, where you have a lot of movement in baby. And normally we can say you can count the kicks. So the general rule is you should feel about 10 kicks in two hours. So remember that baby already is starting a sleep and awake pattern. So we don't expect kicking all the time. Your baby needs some rest in between the kicking of mommy. So um, at any point, that's why also it's a two hour period. So if you really worry and you you think you haven't felt your baby perhaps first of all go and eat something and drink something because immediately in most cases once you eat or drink something it your, your baby starts to move and then perhaps by lying down and really just focusing on baby and just try to feel how many times you feel baby move and it should be about 10 or more in two hours so if it's less than that or you don't feel your baby move no matter what you eat and drink and do then it is also a good idea to be just checked at um, so that you can also, your mind can also be um, put at ease, you know, so that is definitely another really important one. Then the next one is contractions. So what about contractions in pregnancy? Now we know Braxton Hicks contractions are quite real and some of you might have already experienced them, but this is where the uterus itself is starting to sometimes just have some tightenings. So if you feel, on, if you put your hands on your tummy and you press your tummy, it's very likely gonna be soft. It's almost like if you press on your cheek. Okay, so it's quite soft. Sometimes you might press on your tummy and it feels like the tip of your nose or you press on the tummy and it actually feels like your forehead, like really rock hard. That is all normal. Okay, it happens randomly throughout the day sometimes and sometimes there's no pattern involved here. It's not painful. It just happens infrequently and then suddenly it's frequently again but it's not a continuous pattern that that suddenly um, starts happening um, at any point if you have contractions where it starts there's a specific pattern and it's actually intense that you actually feel um, it's tightening of the uterus and it actually feels like period pains you know that accompanies that that might be something to just check. Is it is this um, false labor? Is it Braxton Hicks or is it proper labor contractions? In most cases, to try to determine what it is, is that if you just type, try to take it slow, you go to your uh, let's say to your bathroom if you have if you can and take a nice um, bath, just try to relax. And then also just take a, um, perhaps just by lying down on your bed, taking a nap, anything that really relaxes you, usually if it's not real labor, so if it's Braxton Hicks or if it's false labor pains, then they normally disappear. But if it continues, so at any point, if the contractions continue and the tightening continues and they become worse, then obviously this is contractions. So again, it all depends on when or how far you're pregnant. If you are pregnant and you are before 37 weeks, that is considered premature. Okay, so these babies we want to actually keep in the uterus a little bit longer. So these babies, we don't want you to actually go into labor. We don't want you to birth your baby before 37 weeks. If you have contractions and it's after 37 weeks, then that's no problem because then you actually go into labor and you can have your baby and that is fine. Your baby is okay. If it's before 37 weeks, especially if it's even before 36 weeks, you know, it is sometimes a situation that these babies struggle 
a little bit with the breathing, their lungs aren't fully matured yet. So this is a situation that you would definitely, if you have contractions and you're before 36 weeks pregnant, that you would need to go to hospital to actually um, start with medication that just stops the contractions. Because we always have to consider what is best for baby. Is it inside or is it outside? And at that point in pregnancy, it's way better for your baby to be inside. Okay, so it is important to then rather stay pregnant. Okay, so um, yeah, you can, uh, you know, with the contractions, just try to determine is it real contractions or not. And the real thing to remember here, that it's a constant thing. It's every, let's say 10 minutes, and it's like a contraction, it's pulling, and it's put, you know, it's a, it's a, it's tightening of the uterus, and it actually comes with um, discomfort, and later on, it becomes more intense, and then it goes again. So every, let's say, every ten minutes, you have a contraction about it for a minute or so, and then it goes away. And if it keeps happening, no matter what you do, no matter how many baths or how many naps or um, trying to relax happens, and it continues, and obviously this is actually real labor. Um, something that also happens normally before that even is that you have a vaginal discharge. And remember that vaginal discharge in pregnancy are quite normal. One has usually even a little bit more than when you're not pregnant. And initially, it's just, um, you know, the normal discharge is really just like, like a kind of a clear, whitish kind of discharge. If it's pink or orange that you have before, it's almost like the, it's a, a mucusy kind of a pink discharge. That actually also tells you that the cervix mouth itself is actually starting to become a lot softer and I can show you here if this is the uterus and you've got the cervix here this normally is is closed and it's hard and you have a mucus plug in here if this suddenly is starting to become softer this mucus plug comes out and that can actually also show you and tell you that your body is getting ready for birth. And in most cases, that's not a concern if it's not with contractions. But if you have this and suddenly you're starting with these period crampiness um, and it is before 36 or 37 weeks, then definitely I would say contact your care provider so that you can be looked at. Okay, and that contractions can be stopped if they've started. Okay. The next one is important as well, is what about your water that breaks? Now, again, depending on when in pregnancy this happens, if it's after 37 weeks, it's no problem. If your water breaks, that is okay. You will go into labor and your baby will be born. But if it's before, 30, let's say, 37 weeks, then obviously you're, you will go into labor, but this baby is a little bit premature. So it is, again, something to go to hospital, to go, you know, to contact your care provider, and say, you know, this is what happened so that one can actually give you medication and try to stop this labor. So just to explain to you, if this is the uterus, if this is the cervix, now this mom's cervix has slightly opened up here. And if I turn this and you can see, if you can use your imagination, that inside there, that balloon, that membrane here, those are the membranes, okay, the amniotic membranes. That is the thing that actually ruptures and then the water comes out. Your baby is inside here with, um, with water around and that is really protecting the baby and so on. And what happens if your water breaks, there's a tear in, if I can just show you, there's a tear there and the water comes out and that is how you'll know your water broke because you're suddenly going to have a gush of water and that is also if it's before 37 weeks we know this is also a potential warning sign because we don't want you to actually have your baby before 37 weeks your baby is slightly premature if it's let's say 36 or 35 weeks and even before that your baby is really much too small and much too young we definitely want baby inside longer okay so that is really important the next one is also extremely important and this is also the reason why you go for regular antenatal checkups and that is to really look at your blood pressure every time you go and see your gynae your doctor your midwife your blood pressure is taken every time and the reason for that is that sometimes 
you know, people's blood pressures can actually become a problem where they start being at the higher end and sometimes it can be very high. And that is a concern for the pregnancy, it's a concern for your own health as well as your baby's health. Most people in pregnancy have a low blood pressure, okay, which is quite common, sometimes so low that it's very, it's causing dizziness and so on. But, and that is not a concern. The in pregnancy is the high blood pressure and how will you know that you've got a high blood pressure is that you might actually start experiencing severe headaches or persistent headaches it just does not go away it's just continuously there that you're aware of the headache also abdominal pain at the higher end of your um, of your abdomen underneath the ribs sometimes it can be a severe pain that is a warning sign and also your fingers are really swollen and it's so difficult even you can but it's painful um, and it's really discomfort it's, there's a discomfort in, in doing this. So your fingers are swollen, your feet are swollen, and even your face, if you look at your face, it's more swollen than normal. That is, those are all signs of preeclampsia, of a high blood pressure. So at any point, if you have these consistent headaches that don't go away and you just don't feel well, go to somewhere, even if it's at your pharmacy, um, your closest pharmacy, or if you have your own blood pressure monitor and just do your blood pressure or just ask someone to just check your blood pressure because that was going to tell you if you have a high blood pressure or not. Okay. Also, um, if you do a urine test at that time, one might actually pick up proteins in the urines and all these things are considered warning signs. And if all these things, um, of present, it's obviously uh, preeclampsia, and that is something to be looked at. You um, you need to see your doctor. You need to possibly even um, get onto medication to lower your blood pressure, just for your own health and the health of your baby. Okay, so that is the high blood pressure that is um, that is a concern. Then the next warning sign is that sometimes you you constantly feel the need to urinate. Now, let me just stop there and say that it, that's also quite common in pregnancy to say, you know, especially at night, you just think you're comfortable. And the next minute you think, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. But this, what I'm talking about, is that you really have this feeling of going to the bathroom and then there's nothing once you're there on the toilets, okay? And or when you urinate, that is really burning. It's a burning sensation and that is a UT a urinary tract infection. Okay, so that is something to watch out for. It's a bacterial infection that can that can can be you know a lot worse, and that's also not um, not good for your own health. So and it's really uncomfortable, and it can sometimes even put you in premature labour. So if you have real burning urination, it is something to see your doctor or your care provider for so that you can get on medication to actually um, get rid of this bacterial infection. Okay, so that is very important. At any point, if you have fever, that is another warning sign or, or something that is not normal in pregnancy. Any kind of fever that you have, you have to contact your care provider. And here we can even say something that nowadays in these times that we live in comes in as well is all the COVID symptoms. If you experience any kind of COVID symptoms, um, especially also in, definitely in pregnancy, uh, fever, sometimes even diarrhea, throat that's painful, lots of coughing, all the normal um, COVID signs, it is best to contact your care provider and actually have a test. Okay, so um, that is quite important to also realize. And then something that is often, I would say it's more commonly spoken about, um, not like in the past, is any kind of depression feelings. If you have any kind of thoughts of harming yourself in pregnancy, and it actually happens much more than we think. You know, a lot of people, it's a silent thing that a lot of people struggle with. But at any point, if you feel like you're not coping, you have any, you have thoughts of harming yourself um, or your unborn baby, then the, the, this is a warning sign to say, you know, talk to someone, contact someone, talk to your healthcare provider, talk to the person closest to you, your partner, your husband, who in it, whoever, you know, in your family, 
or just go straight to your healthcare provider and say, you know, these are the kind of feelings that I've got, you know, because they are quite real. Um, and we want to uh, emotionally um, make it better for you that you can cope so much better. And it is, again, it is an important, very important topic. And it's a very important thing to realize that you are not alone. There are so many people that really um, silently carry this depression or anxiety feeling. And it is important to know that um, that it can be, you can get help. There is help out there if you are feeling like this. Okay, and then um, another thing that often happens is that you have some moms who become quite itchy so it's you itch all over now first of all the first trimester sometimes it can even be the vitamins that you're drinking and just by changing to different kind of vitamins can actually help but if you have throughout pregnancy especially in the last trimester of pregnancy the last couple of weeks if you become really itchy all over your body and it's um, there is no rash that can actually be um, a pregnancy related condition that has to do with the liver okay so again um, it's something to be aware of and at any point if you do experience this you can contact your doctor so that you know tests can be done for that but again itchiness especially if you think about your tummy especially if you think about your hips and your breasts those are the places that it is quite common that a lot of people do experience itchiness because of the growing especially the the tummy, the, you know, the growing of the uterus and the baby is growing and then the tummy, the skin just has to keep up, up with it and that is often where the stretch marks come in as well. And here I can just, a tip for, for you would be by using some tissue oil and just really massaging your tummy twice a day in the morning and at night time. So that really helps a lot for that. But if the itchiness um, is without a rash and it's not specifically just these places, it's all over your body um, and you're in your last trimester of pregnancy, then I would definitely say contact your care provider and tell your care provider this is what you're actually experiencing. Right, so the bottom line really is at any point, if something is bothering you, if you are worried, about something and you're not quite sure if this is normal or if you definitely know this is abnormal some any of these things that we you know that we've spoken about now um, it is important to contact your healthcare provider contact your doctor your gynae or your midwife so that you can be checked out and get the proper treatment for that because pregnancy is actually a very special time in your life and we want you to remain healthy and also for your baby to be healthy so that when baby is born, that mom and baby are doing good. Right, so I hope you learned something today that you also know what is normal or actually what is not normal and what to do if you experience it. So stomach aches and contractions, one just has to determine the difference between them if it's not contraction. So it's not the uterus that is um, contracting. If it's stomach ache, almost like um, diarrhea and stomach, that is definitely also something, any kind of abnormal a kind of feeling that you've got and that is not normal is should always be looked at. Um, the, obviously, the first choice, you know, question might be, have you eaten something? How are you? Do you have diarrhea or not? Are you vomiting with that? Because sometimes there are bacteria or even viruses that go around and it actually causes severe vomiting and um, abdominal pain, you know, um, stomach pain, and then diarrhea with that and vomiting. So again, if you experience this and you are um, pregnant, then definitely it is something that I would say, um, you know, your healthcare provider needs to um, check you out and just give you the proper medication. A lot of medication, if you go to the pharmacy, you can't just take anything from the shelf, you know, because you are pregnant, you have to get the proper medication for yourself. Okay, so that is where um, you need to have a proper diagnosis made to see what exactly is the cause of this, so that you can get the proper medication for that specific um, symptom that you're experiencing.